Hey, English 079. We are in week eight. There is no midterm in this course, but we are still moving right along. So uh, let's get started. Now in English 101, um, your essay is due this week. So I really want you to focus in, in comp one. Uh, remember that you'll be doing a peer review in that class this week. So really, really focus on making sure that you are, are focusing on comp one, get uh, your, your rough drafts up to that um, discussion board. Many of you guys have already done so, most of you guys have already done so, but if you haven't, get it in there today, okay? This is, this is super important that you're getting those rough drafts accomplished on time so you can take advantage of those peer reviews. And then hopefully, the, long, the, the thing is, the longer your essay is up, the better chance that you're gonna get a student, maybe that is a really skilled English writing student who's gonna review your essay and give you some really, really good feedback. You don't wanna wait to the last minute because oftentimes if you wait to the last minute, the people that wait to the last minute to do the peer review might just be trying to get, get it done just to get it done. What you wanna to try to do is get those things in as early as you can. So people who are ahead of the game, they can help you get ahead of the game. So. Just think about it like that and make sure in comp one, you're getting your uh, peer review done by Wednesday at, at midnight and then Friday night by midnight, make sure your essay two is handed in to the English 101 um, essay two folder. Now let's talk about what we're gonna be doing in English 079. And this is getting us ready for the next essay. Okay, so there will be uh, readings and, and things like that always in our, our class. So make sure that you are really staying up to date with all of these readings. So let's take a look at what's on this, this uh, syllabus. This week, we're doing a reading guide and a journal entry. Um, you're gonna do journal number seven. And then this week, you're gonna do uh, your reading number six, and then the critical reading guide activity number six. So your, your reading guide basically for reading number six. Now, which one is reading number six? What we're gonna do this week is uh, since it's a busy week in comp one, we're gonna read the shorter of the two readings. And the shorter of the two readings is in your textbook. Um, it is uh, Why Bother? So Why Bother by um, Michael Pollan in your textbook. And you can find that um, on page, I believe it's seven, what is it? 764, I believe. Let me just make sure and I'll tell you. Let's see here, 764, I believe. I'm, I'm almost certain. Yep, hey, I was right, 764. So in your textbook on page 764, please read that article. And the nice thing is whenever you are doing your uh, reading guide, and of course you always go over here to content assignment links and then the reading guide file, and then you download your reading guide. When you do that reading guide, of course, it always asks you for a little information about the author and you can, and it tells you all about the author in the first part of the book, um, or, or at least the first part of the article in the, there's a little about the author section. Now, I want you to think about who is the intended audience for this uh, particular reading. Is it people who don't believe in global climate change that is caused by humans or is it people that do believe in human caused global climate change? So really think about that as you go about it and, and think about, well, if he was trying to make an argument to a group of people that climate change is, is man-made, what kind of argument would he have to make? And if he's trying to make an argument um, to people that already believe that it's man-made, how would he structure his, his essay? What is he trying to prove in other words, okay? Think about that. What's this guy trying to prove? And that's gonna give you a good uh, idea about who his intended audience is. And just like every other reading that we've done, you're going to do a, you're gonna do a, uh, what I like to call the reverse outline. However, however, this particular reading does not have subheaders, okay? So you're really gonna to have to read this closely and you're gonna to have to say, okay, what is the, what is the main point? What are the main points in this essay? And I'm not going to give you a ton of guidance this time, okay? Uh, for the first two essays, I did. I, I pretty much told you all the answers. But I want you to look through here and think about this. Okay, what are the main ideas? Really read it and think about, okay, what are the main things that he brought up? That literally is going to be what you're going to put down here, okay? So 
you think about the introduction, how is he introducing his topic? And his thesis statement, what is his overall argument? What is his overall claim? Okay, and it might be something that he says specifically, it might be something that is not specifically stated, but it's implied. You need to think about that. Now, this is going to require reading this essay very critically. And that's how we should always read articles and essays. <clears throat> we should always read them critically. And we're halfway through the semester. We've gotten through four readings so far. And this one is not that long. So I'm not going to give you all the answers, but I want you to really think this through as you read it. It's only, let's see, one, two, three, four, five pages long. Very, very, um, you know, you can, you can really read it multiple times in, in not a lot of time and really think, and as you go through it, what I like to do, maybe I'll take a pencil and I will just lightly kind of outline the, the different points as I am reading it so that whenever I go back, I can really say, okay, so he's making this point, he's making this point, and he's making this point. There, there are three major points in this article, but you could probably say there are four. I'm just gonna give you that little spoiler alert. Um, so there's three or four. There are three that I'm really, really looking for specifically. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna just kind of give you an idea of some of the ones I'm looking for. Um, one of them is uh, Michael Pollan's, what he believes is the answer to um, the, the, the global climate change, essentially what is his argument, right? And so, so that'd, be, that'd be the thesis. And he's basically arguing that small changes in our lives, if we all adopt small changes, we can make a big impact on the climate, okay? So there's your thesis. Uh-oh, am I doing your homework for you again? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just give you a little bit more, but, but I'm not gonna do completely for you. Um, the other things that you're going to really want to think about is when he talks about the cheap energy mind, I'll go in, I, I want to, I'm not going in the order that he's going into. So cheap energy mind, you're going to want to think about what is he talking about when he talks about, uh, growing your own food and having a relationship with where your food comes from. And then the other thing you're really going to want to think about is, um, the, uh, when he says, you know, how, how will change really happen? Is it going to be through, uh, legislation, or is it going to be through the uh, the average person's movements and um, and and their their actions? So those are the three of the big ones. There's a fourth one in there, uh, especially when it comes to talking about specialization. So that's one that um, actually that's a really big one, you know. So maybe maybe really I'll just tell you all four. But you've got to be able to go back to this outline and just say what is it that he's saying about these things. And what are some of the main points? Okay, now this is going to go, this is going to help you whenever you do your summary, because you've got all the main points here. But it's also going to help you if you choose to write your essay number three, uh, using this one, this article as your focus. The next article is much longer, but it does have sub subheaders. I'm giving you the short one this week since you've got so much going on in comp one. But this is stuff that we're going to get into um, starting next week with essay three in comp one. And next week, you're going to read the other essay. Um, so, but right now in your book, you should all have your book by now. And you need to read Michael Pollan's Why Bother? And you're going to do your reading guide um, for that. And then the only other thing you're going to do is your, let's see here, is your journal number seven. And you guys have been very good about getting those done. So congratulations on that. You guys have been doing really well. So that's all you have to do this week for English 079. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to drop into my virtual office hours. I've been talking to quite a few of you actually. And uh, so that's really great. For some of you guys, you're, you're, some of you are falling behind and that's, that, that happens every semester. There's some people that fall behind. Don't let that be you. And if you feel like you're starting to fall behind, this is midterm, okay? And so it's, it's, it's getting to the point where if you haven't done anything, well, it was gonna be hard to come back, but maybe we can make a way um, if you're just falling behind a little, maybe a week or so, you can get back in the game. Uh, don't let yourself fall behind too far because we're speeding up both classes. English 101 and English 079 are going to get faster. We're going to start expecting a little bit more because now at this point, you should have at least the basics under your belt. And then we're going to grow on those basics. So, so just so you know, that's what to expect. And if you feel like you need any help, always feel free to reach out to me. If you're emailing me, please be specific. Say, this is my name, okay? A lot of people email me, they don't tell me their name or the class they're in or anything that I can really use as information to help them. So make sure to always tell me your name 
in the class that you're in and then be specific about what it is you have a question on okay spend some time really making this message clear to me so that i can either write you back an email to tell you the answer or i can say okay we need to schedule a zoom call and if i if i know clearly what your issues are ahead of time i can really get to the point and I'm not sitting there trying to draw it out of you in an interview or something like that. I can actually say, okay, go to here, go here. This is what we need to do. And that's going to help you. It's going to save us both a lot of time and it's going to get you the answers and, and, and the help that you need a lot faster. And that's, that's really the goal. So just remember that if you do need help, I'm always here to help. Um, make sure to reach out with clear emails, making sure that you are um, clearly telling me who you are, what class you're in and what help you need. Okay, guys, that's it for this week. Make sure to finish these things up and I will see you next week.